Hi, uh, my name is John McFarlane, and um, the Fixed Point Library is uh, um, uh, something that I've been working on um, with the aim of uh, having fixed point numerics, uh, fixed point arithmetic uh, standardized. And um, I'm, going to I'm going to assume a certain sort of level of knowledge um, ab about, about the subject matter. And hopefully, um, if you don't know what fixed point is, uh, does anybody not know what uh, fixed point arithmetic is? OK. Well, uh, I'll, I'll typically use um, the example of a 16-bit um, number. Um, the notation there, U88, uh, is, is uh, one of many arbitrary different uh, uh, notations used to describe uh, fixed point types. And the, the illustration here shows that the uh, an unsigned 88 uh, fixed point type has eight integer digits and then eight fractional digits. Um, it's, it's stored in a, in a short value, an unsigned 16-bit value um, under the hood. However, um, it's used to represent numbers that are real, that have a fractional component. Um, OK. OK, so the reason for fixed point, if you were in the, um, the uh, SG14 talk earlier, um, you will recognize the um, graphic in the, in the middle here. These, these are examples of, these illustrate what happens when you use uh, fixed point to, sorry, floating point to represent uh, numbers. On the left there, you see a distribution of the different values that a, a simple floating point uh, type can represent. And as you see, it's, there's a, a lot of detail at the, um, at, at the origin, but as numbers increase, you have um, lower granularity, and you, and you have trouble representing uh, uh, values to, to the, the same degree of accuracy. So uh, typically, with, um, when you're representing space, like 2D coordinates on a map, uh, particularly in, in, in simulations, um, you will see the, in the, the, the center there, you, um, you have a lot of detail near the center of, of the map, but as you head out toward, away from the origin, wherever you've chosen for your origin, you, you start to hit some, some often serious problems because the, the, the gaps between each, each position and the next are growing. Your, your accuracy is being reduced. And uh, a celebrated example of that is in a, a popular game called Minecraft. And in, we're seeing here four totally different areas of a, a map generated in Minecraft. And it's showing how the, 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 the procedural generation of this map has gone really badly wrong, far away from the origin. At the top, you have a, um, a part of the map that's near the origin, and it looks beautiful. You have some coastline and some, some forest areas there. But as you, you, you head in a, far along the x-axis or the y-axis, longitude or latitude, um, eventually you get artifacts. You get the, the, the model breaks down. And so here you just get uh, very, uh, nothing's, nothing's working because uh, floating point has these limitations. And um, so that's one of the, one of the um, primary uh, incentives for me to, to work on um, standardizing fixed point to, so, so that we can use that as an alternative to floating point to represent real numbers in a convenient way. But there are a number of other advantages that, that fixed point has, in particular, um, the amount of silicon necessary to um, to represent fixed point it's pretty much what you the, the, the same requirements you'd use for uh, for integer whereas floating point is a fair bit more complex particularly if you want it to be ie um, 754 standard <laughs> okay all right so this is a really um, it's just just imagine this is my first attempt at fixed point what, what you see here is uh, Kind of a typical uh, approach to fixed point using sort of quite low level um, language constructs. It's almost C. I mean, the, the const extra there kind of gives away the fact that it that it is not. Um, and so, it, with our example where we have this U um, eight eight fixed point type, we want to we it, it, converting between the the fixed point type and the floating point is just a matter of scaling by the necessary amount because there are uh, eight bits devoted to fraction. It means that the, the whole number is uh, represent, it's representing a value 256 times smaller than the actual integer that's storing it. 
And so you see there when you, you, you flip from float to, to, um, to this fixed point format, it's just a matter of scaling up. You can use a, um, a sh bit shift operator if you want, um, but that, it's not necessary. And uh, in fact, when I talk about fixed point, I'm really talking about binary fixed point, but indeed you can have decimal fixed point or hexadecimal fixed point. It's, it's merely the case that uh, most interest is with binary fixed point because binary is uh, what machines use to begin with. And there is actually a, quite a bit of interest in um, representing decimal fixed point, particularly in the, the financial sector where they, they want to represent monetary values with, uh, with sort of precision characteristics that you don't necessarily get with floating point numbers. Okay, so the, we have the conversion here. It takes you from, from fixed back to float. And then we have some arithmetic here. We have uh, add and multiply, pretty necessary operations. And one of the really nice things about fixed point numbers is that when you add two uh, fixed point numbers of the same type together, you just have to add them, and the result is already um, totally correct, um, just as if you'd added those integers together. However, uh, multiply is a whole different kettle of fish, and, and uh, already things are getting a, a little more complicated here. When you multiply two fixed point values together, um, where they both had eight fractional digits to begin with, they, they now have 16 fractional digits. Um, and that, that so, so in order to convert back to our, our type with only eight fractional digits, we here we have to divide by 256. And so right here, this is where things start to get complicated and where it might be nice if we could automate a lot of the, the work involved in representing fixed point values in this way to avoid um, various pitfalls. And so speaking of pitfalls, um, given what you just saw on that last slide, um, there are the, hopefully, if you're you know you, you are presumably C plus plus programmers, and uh, you you probably were thinking straight away, well, there there's some ways I could do this um, better. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why the uh, the, the traditional um, hand woven in, um, fixed point arithmetic is is uh, not satisfactory. Um, in particular, so if you if you forget that you, your whether your value is the, the uh, an actual you're just using it as an integer or whether it's one of these implicitly scaled fixed point values, um, if if you just forget that for one line, you your value your your math is off by um, a, a, you know a factor of two or more, and um, also th there's many I've given the example and I'll continue to give the example of um, this unsigned. 8 8 type, it's a 16 bit type, but uh, really any, any number of integer and fractional digits are possible. There's no reason to, to limit fixed point to any particular type. And um, uh, with the multiply, straight away, it would be really nice if we had something we could, uh, where we could overload the um, uh, uh, arithmetic operations. And then there's a, a whole bunch of uh, problems. Uh, that uh, I've found getting feedback from, from this work um, to do with um, so overflow safety. Um, it, it's quite easy to you know multiply it by too big a number, and suddenly you have you have um, you know overflow or, or wrap around undefined behavior. Um, and also there are a bunch of ways in which the the results are losing information. Particularly, for, for instance, if you convert from a floating point value to a fixed point value um, and and the floating point value is a high precision you're going to lose some of that information and uh, the way that rounding happens is is designed for speed it's not designed for accuracy so you don't get um, um, round to nearest behavior that you you might want if you wanted the the most accuracy possible and um, so there's there's all these problems that uh, people identify with uh, fixed point and the more that I've uh, looked at this um, um, this library designed this uh, um, solution. The, the more that I've realized that most of them are common to integer as well. And um, this has got me thinking about really what, what people's expectations are of fixed point and what a solution really should be providing. 
So really, most of this stuff, it's, it's common to integers. And another thing that it's kind of obvious, but uh, um, has become very apparent as I've gone on, is that integers are fixed point numbers. They just, uh, they're just, you know, U16, zero or, or whatever. They, there's no, they're, they're fixed point numbers with no fractional digits. And that's, that's, that's all there is to them. So basically, we are already in, from C, we've inherited uh, fixed point numbers, but, but in an incredibly limited range. So, um, as a, so my current um, the, um, sort of pursuit, the, the current um, argument I'm trying to make is uh, I, as mine and uh, other um, proposals um, are, are trying to um, progress towards standardization, um, I'm, I'm of the opinion that a fixed point um, it's just one of a, a bunch of problems that uh, we want to solve. And the best way to go about solving these problems is each in isolation. So fixed point really, all it should really be doing is approximating real numbers using integers by scaling them by a fixed amount and should not worry about all these other things such as rounding um, and undefined behavior and overflow, these kinds of things. And so I'm sort of, Come, come to the opinion that uh, not just fixed point, but a, a bunch of other types should be defined. Uh, they should be literal class templates. And um, does, does everyone know what I mean by a literal class template? Uh, it's a, a, a type typically has um, liberal use of const expert, particularly in its um, constructors. And uh, it can be used uh, in, in places where traditionally uh, integers and, and uh, built-in types would be used. And they're incredibly useful, powerful um, types. Uh, OK, so yeah, I will, um, yes, I will. So I'll present some of the, here's some examples of some of the types that I think it would be worth pursuing and trying to, um, to provide for users. And so let's go through these. So a checked integer, this is, don't worry about the names. This is, this is, um, any like a, a type basically that a uh, um, it checks whether overflow has occurred and um, maybe throws an exception or terminates the program with an error or somehow communicates to the program that a, an error has occurred and the value uh, stored in in that particular variable is no longer um, uh, should not be used. So a widening integer. Um, it deals with the same problem. This is an interesting distinction. Uh, there's, there's, it seems two distinct ways to deal with overflow. One is to uh, throw an error, um, but try and maintain types of the same width. Um, and then another um, contrasting, very interesting strategy is to make sure that the result is always wide enough to contain the result of whatever operation is going on. So we, uh, you saw an example of fixed point multiplication earlier on. And um, you find with, with fixed point, and indeed with, with uh, any integers, that you get back a result that's twice the width of whatever went in. So if you multiply two 16-bit values together, you need 32 bits. And if, you get, if the result is a 32-bit integer, you're guaranteed that you will not get overflow. And that's um, a pretty powerful guarantee to provide because normally um, people just expect that they've got to be very careful that the, the integers that they use have the capacity necessary to perform the operations that they want. But it is a notoriously um, problematic, thank you, um, um, situation. And uh, C and C++ have um, come under a lot of criticism recently for having many ways for errors to be introduced into programs. Um, okay, so rounding, rounded integers. Um, now, again, this may or may not be something that is uh, um, best represented as a type, but imagine a, um, an integer type which, instead of using the same rounding rules that a built-in int or short or long use, Imagine that it uh, rounded to nearest, rather than truncating the fractional part of a, of a, a value, it, it rounded to the nearest whole number. You, you, you find that a, a lot of error is reduced 
with that kind of behavior. Also, when you, when you divide uh, integers or when you, you shift, you don't necessarily, again, get the, the, the sort of rounding behaviors that you want. And it's not even consistent how, how this happens. Sometimes um, the operation will cause truncation of the, the fractional part. And other times, the, the number is rounded towards negative infinity. And this is, um, often it's, it's not a huge deal, but if you want as much accuracy as possible without having to think about it too much, it, it, it would be very desirable for, for there to be a type that acted like an integer, but rounded in a way that was a bit more, if you like, mathematically, mathematically correct. And okay, so finally, fixed point. This is uh, um, a, a, a type which, it's kind of like an integer, but it also has fra a fractional part. And um, it, there is a, you know, there's, um, a desire to have all of the properties of all these four types um, bundled together into some super type, which solves these and possibly other problems. And I am, I am of the opinion that um, it's probably better if they're broken up, broken up decomposed into different problems. And uh, um, the only question really is, uh, is this possible in a way that is um, performant and that uh, um, is, is zero cost, basically? Um, that's a really important thing, I think. Okay. So, introducing the, uh, the fixed point uh, type. Um, well, it's a, a class template. You can um, see a, so there's, I have a paper which goes into detail on this type, and, and by the way, it's, it's continually uh, evolving the, the, the specification of this thing, so uh, um, um, do, do come back, I'm, I'm planning to, to update it quite soon. Um, so, if, so let's just jump to the, the usage here. Say you want to, we're gonna take our, finally take our 16-bit fixed point type, and we're gonna turn it into um, this uh, literal class uh, I have one question for yeah. the uh, exponent. Does that require a uh, a power of two argument, or is it yes. yeah? So it's a power of two that we're talking about. It's a power of two. There's um, there's a lot of desire to to have other bases, and uh, okay. I've I've kind of yeah. I'm I'm skipping over that for this talk, but uh, certainly we could have um, power of ten, maybe a, a third parameter or a, a different template. But typically, people are expecting uh, a, a, um, a power of two, a binary fixed point type. Uh, and actually, this, this exponent is its pretty much the same value that you'd find in a floating point number. There are, in a 32-bit floating point number, there are typically seven bits of exponent. And um, there, there's some quirks to, well, there's many, many quirks to the floating point, um, the standard floating point type. Um, but essentially, they have an exponent like this, which which says how many bits to to shift the value in order to to shift the integer, the mantissa bit, in order to get the value that you're actually looking for. Um, yes. Yeah, so here, because we want we want to represent values that are eight kind of eight eight bits shifted down, they're they're 256 times smaller than the the integer that's holding them. That's why we have the, the negative eight here to say that that's, that's the value to shift down by in order to, to get, the, get the real value out. And now we can, even, even though this is a little, a little long-winded, we can now, you know, here, here we have an alias to that, that type. Um, so just a little aside here. I've mentioned multiply, multiplication before, and it's, there's a, there's, Quite an interesting problem involved in in, um, in how to how to perform arithmetic. Uh, as I mentioned, if you add two two values together and they're the same fixed point type, it's 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 a matter of just adding the integers together, and, uh, and that's really great. That's that's nice and easy. But once you get to multiplication, and I'm not even going to um, get on to division, but multiplication has has some problems because you you need double the width in order to preserve all the bits from from uh, in the result and typically with integers say you've got to you multiply two 32-bit integers together on a machine in which 
IMSA 32 bits and the value overflows, well, it just gets truncated and people kind of, they know about this and it's, it's um, something that we live with for better or worse. However, if you're using a 32-bit integer to represent a number in the range 0 to 1, for instance, you, and you, try, you truncate the, the, the higher bits of a value after you've multiplied, multiplied two of these together, you are, it's catastrophic. It's just, it won't fly. And so there is a, a conflict here about what is the, the best thing to do, um, what's the best strategy for, for multiply, multiplying and dividing fixed point numbers. And it's, uh, it is a really interesting thorny problem and there's, uh, there's no super simple solution that's um, completely satisfactory to everybody. Um, but uh, down here, so widen, that's, uh, that's the, the, the approach I'm, I'm starting to, to, to head towards, I think. Um, I think it's just inevitable that, you, that people will expect all the, all the precision to be preserved when, when, when these arithmetic operations are performed. And actually, um, that's not all that different to what happens when you um, perform arithmetic with integer types. Currently, what happens, typically promotion occurs and you, you find yourself with a result that is the size of an integer no matter how, how wide the, the inputs were. So take, take, for example, you multiply two char values together, you know, 100 times 100. Um, the, um, if they're signed chars, that you, you would have caused overflow. But always multiplying two chars together, uh, the result, the, the, the chars are uh, promoted to integer, uh, full 32-bit integers, and then those, those values are multiplied together. And that's, um, people often don't realize that that's, that's what's happening uh, all the time because it, is, it typically fixes a lot of problems before they occur. Um, but they're problems that can't really be av avoided with, with fixed point because, like I say, you might be you're, you're far more likely to be using the full 32 bits of your your machine register to to store the value. You're not just multiplying 100 and 100, and it's great because it it fits within two billion. That's the, that's no longer the case, and uh, yeah, this is a quite a, a challenging problem to overcome. Um, so I'm going to show you. Some of the the things that are that I'm trying to get done with this fixed point type, and um, I'm going to rattle through these. Um, you can find these incidentally if you go to the the GitHub uh, page that I, I mentioned at the top. There is uh, these and many other examples are available to try and give you an idea of of how these types behave. So here, this is um, some basic arithmetic going on. Um, I've uh, I've declared a type, uh, it's a declared a variable. It's an 8-bit unsigned fixed point type, uh, and it's got four integer and four fractional digits. Um, and uh, by the way, any feedback on this, uh, if, if you think that negative four isn't a counterintuitive way to say that there are four fractional digits, that's certainly something that's come up before, and I'd be interested to, to hear what people think about this. But um, this, this value here completely saturates that um, that eight, eight bits there. That's that. That's going to be represented by um, two hundred and fifty. The value two hundred and fifty-five uh, inside the inside this class, inside this um, object. So what happens next? Well, we in in a really naive um, example, we multiply this value. Well, we square this value and assign it right back to to the original type and. Um, overflow is going to occur here. We're going to lose uh, an awful lot of information. We're going to lop off four high and four low bits, and um, this this is where th this is where you start to miss uh, floating point and, and realize just how useful floating, just how idiot proof uh, floating point is. Um, it is it, floating point is great, by the way. If 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 you're happy with it, you don't necessarily consider using fixed point ever. But um, uh, with C++, with C++ with, with C++ 11 makes it um, at least feasible. If if you need fixed point, it's not going to be a complete nightmare to come up with a um, uh, an API that is that is usable and, and gets you this what you expect. And and here straight away the the auto keyword is is very very handy here. Um, when we multiply these these um, values together, 
we're gonna it it's not returning the same type that that went in. It's it's producing a, a value. It's producing a type uh, a, a, a result in a type that's uh, wide enough to store the result, and it's it's guaranteed that that it's going to be wide enough, which is which is a pretty powerful thing. And um, so here, there's no overflow. There's no error. Um, and yeah, it's all good news. Um, I've also um, provided some named functions. Uh, multiply here is it does a similar thing. Um, however, the widening is um, is a is a a lot less aggressive with multiply. So it just uses whatever the the, the underlying promotion rules are for the the type that you used. So up here, we said, hey, use a, a unsigned int. A, this is just a this is a standard integer type. It basically means uh, unsigned char on most systems, and uh, so you know right away this oops this value will be it's going to be unsigned. It's going to be eight bit, and you can have some pretty you, you can already know some make some assumptions about the um, the work that's going to be done under the hood, and um, I, th I feel like this is quite a valuable straight away. It's a valuable way to um, to to ask for a particular. Um, fixed point type. So I said uh, we, we were going to break down all these different problems into different um, literal types and then combine them together. This is a, a rather extreme example of a. Um, so I, I don't know who's heard of the Boost Multi Precision Library, but it's a, um, a library that um, provides you with integer types of pretty much unlimited capacity. And in, in this case, I'm using a, a helper type here, make you fixed. It's a little bit like you know, make make pair or or, or make um, tuple, um, but in this case, it makes an unsigned fixed point value, and it's this particular type that it's going to provide has um, it's 400 uh, integer bits and 400 fractional bits. Now, this type here, you'll notice it's a, only a, a 128 bit type. But what I'm saying with, with this type is use this as the, I, I call this the archetype. So basically, take a type like this, widen it as necessary in order to come up with a type which can store numbers with this many digits in it. So what you get back is a, this type big number is, is now uh, a fixed point type with 800 digits in it. And... Um, the beauty of this is I'm harnessing boost multi precision and getting to do all the work of storing absurdly large numbers, and then I'm just treating it like any other built-in int, and I can I can I can use it to make a, a Google, which is a, a value which is uh, ten to raised to the one hundred, and I can I can in, I can inverse that invert that Google is, yep, I can invert it here and. I now have, a, I don't know if there's a word for a, like a one divided by a Google, a uh, Google. Oh, Google. A Google. A Google. A Google. Yes. Google. There you go. Um, yeah, and, and I, there was relatively little plumbing necessary to, to adapt uh, boost multi precision to work, to work with fixed point. And uh, you, there's no need to stop there. I've, I've, I've been working on a, a type called elastic integer, which it would be the, the, the second of those four categories where you take, um, you say, hey, give me a, a six-bit integer um, as the underlying, as the archetypal um, uh, representational type. I want it to use uh, int8 to store this, 30, six, this value 63. And then when I square my elastic integer type, um, what I get back is something that will widen by the correct number of bits. So say down here, I, I add these two values together. OK, thanks. And, um, and it's grown by one bit, because when you add two, two integers together, you need one extra bit, bit of precision. And um, this value, when combined with, with the elastic, with, with, with fixed point, gets you um, real numbers that grow uh, as needed, um, pretty much up to, up, to, up to whatever limit is provided by the elastic integer. And um, in this way, just to sum up, um, you can you can um, keep going with with this kind of uh, composition of types, and um, 
solve t- tackle a lot of these problems. I, I've only just got started coming up with different types that that uh, that do these things. Um, and another another one is uh, um, Robert's uh, um, safe safe numeric library, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can you can catch overflow and and throw an exception. And um, I've started uh, incorporating that into fixed point as well, so that you have much safer values. Uh, and and uh, at that point, I, I need to hand over to to Robert. And do you want to get set up? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so it might be a good time to take questions, particularly about fixed point. If anyone's oh, okay. curious. Yes. Um, so when you specify the exponent in the um, fixed point template. Mm-hmm. What is the meaning of a positive exponent? Oh, good question. That the question is, uh, what is the what does a positive exponent represent? Uh, there's n- there's no reason not to have a positive exponent, and when you do, you get a number that is larger than the the integer storing it, rather than smaller. So, for instance, uh, say I had um, an exponent with positive ten, and uh, I could use that to represent kilobytes. And so um, a value of one would represent one kilobyte. Um, now, they would, I would be losing precision. I couldn't represent individual bits. Um, so, uh, another example, if exponent was set to positive one, then I could only represent uh, even numbers. Does, does, does that make sense? So, uh, there is no reason to, to just um, fixate on the fractional. You can have a negative number of fractional um, digits in a fixed point number. Um, it's it's not used that often. Usually they are used to represent fractions, but in no way is that necessary at all. So I'll, I'll just comment. I think uh, in light of the fact that you can use positive exponents, mm-hmm. the decision to um, to use the okay. argument that way with negative numbers negative. and fractions mm-hmm. is perfectly justified. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, hi, yes. Uh, on the slide where you were discussing uh, the complete argument, Mm-hmm. You said that when you don't have a sufficient amount of bits, you widen it? Um, that's correct. So how do you do that? Do you store like a, an array of this type? Um, well, so uh, it's a little bit detailed that I haven't really um, got into, but uh, um, there is a, I, I define a type called um, set width. And you can, uh, it's, a, it's like a, a, a template type. And uh, one of the arguments is the, the value which you wish to widen. And another argument is the number of bits you wish to widen it to. And you can get a, a, a widened value out as a result. And um, so, yes, it takes, it takes uh, the, the, the in 128 there and the value 800 and produces um, its result. It, um, it ha- it's a struct with a member type which has the, uh, like the, the widened um, value in it. And unfortunately, you need to uh, specialize that for the, the types that you're going to use with a fixed point. That, that's, that's one of the necessary bits of plumbing to get that to work. OK. Um, hi, yes. Is there a way to create a restrict integer from some constant and uh, so that the restrict integer automatically detects uh, the required? For example, I write down. I have done some work towards this. I can with uh, with with whole numbers. I can pass them in as a template parameter and get back a type that's big enough to store that. But uh, um, I would really like to take a look at uh, user-defined literals and see just what I whether I can take extract from the from a, a, a string maybe or, or a number whether I can extract from that template parameters. For the fixed point type, um, yeah. I mean, basically, what Boost Hanna does. Um, <laughs> I, I've got to look into um, yeah how Louis does that and, and try and figure that out. It's like people with cars. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's on the that's on the backlog of many 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 tasks involved related to this. Um, so when you specify the exponent in the um, Fixed point template. Mm-hmm. What is the meaning of a positive exponent? Oh, good question. That the question is, uh, what is the what does a positive exponent represent? 
uh, there's n there's no reason not to have a positive exponent, and when you do, you get a number that is larger than the the integer storing it rather than smaller. So, for instance, uh, say I had um, an exponent with positive ten, and I could use that to represent kilobytes, and so um, a value of one would represent one kilobyte. Um, now, there would, I would be losing precision. I couldn't represent individual bits. Um, so, uh, another example, if exponent was set to positive one, then I could only represent uh, even numbers. Does, does, does that make sense? So, uh, there is no reason to, to just um, fixate on the fractional. You can have a negative number of fractional um, digits in a fixed point number. Um, it's, it's not used that often. Usually they are used to represent fractions, but in no way is that necessary at all. I'll just comment. I think, uh, in light of the fact that you can use positive exponents, mm -hmm. the decision to um, to use the okay. argument that way with negative numbers negative. and expressions mm -hmm. is perfectly justified. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, hi. Yes. Uh, on the slide where you were discussing uh, the complete argument with the uh, boost multiple precision library, mm -hmm. you said that when you don't have a um, that's correct. So how do you do that? Do you store like a, an array of this type? Um, well, so uh, it's a little bit detailed that I haven't really um, got into, but uh, um, there is a I, I define a type called um, set width, and you can uh, it's a it's like a, a, a template type, and uh, one of the arguments is the, the value which you wish to widen, and another argument is the number of bits you wish to widen it to. And you can get a, a, a widened value out as a result. And um, so, yes, it takes it takes uh, the 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 end one twenty eight there and the value eight hundred, and produces um, its result. It, um, it ha it's a struct with a member type which has the uh, like the, the widened um, value in it. And unfortunately, you need to uh, specialize that for the the types that you're going to use with a fixed point. That, that's that's one of the necessary bits of plumbing to get that to work. Um, hi, yes. Is there a way to create elastic integer from some constant and uh, so that the elastic integer automatically detects uh, the required? For example, I write down 200 and mm -hmm. I want to create an elastic integer that can keep that 200 number. Um, I, I have done some work towards this. I can, with, uh, with, with whole numbers, I can pass them in as a template parameter and get back a type that's big enough to store that. But uh, um, I would really like to take a look at uh, user-defined literals and see just what I, whether I can take, extract from, the, from a, a, a string, maybe, or, or a number, whether I can extract from that template parameters for the fixed point type. Um, yeah, I mean, basically what Boost Hannah does. Um, <laughs> I, I've got to look into um, yeah how Louis does that and, and try and figure that out. It's like a keyboard with the cars. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's on the that's on the backlog of many 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 tasks involved related to this. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, I've I've already overrun by by quite a bit. So, uh, um, yeah. do you? Maybe you should continue. It's already. I guess probably five minutes before seven now. So I think maybe. Oh yes, no, no. I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. By by all means, get get going with the the AV. And uh, yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. All right. Uh, were there any other questions? Anything else? Yes. Correct. So, so what concept? The, the the question was, am I stalling for time? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I, I feel like uh, Robert would be um, um, the best person to ask about that because he keeps um, reminding me that I, I'm not I'm not really um, uh, stipulating what types are valid as the rep type, for instance, and uh, I really need to um, start making it clear that I can't just pass a, a stud string in as the as the rep type. That's just not going to work. Um, I haven't really um, looked into um, what might be useful with um, with concepts, either you know formal concepts or the just sort of the the, the 
Got, right. Um, but uh, certainly, it would make it clear what 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 types are and are not um, uh, suitable for use. For instance, I mean, I, there's a, there's a whole bunch of uh, different operators. If if uh, if your rep type doesn't have plus operator plus, then you you can't add fixed point that uses it. For instance, so Get it's the really magic on a, here. It's on a per per case basis largely, but a, a being being copyable is probably you know, the, the, just just to begin with. Yeah. Kind of seems like it would oh. Yes. Okay. The question is, um, what do I think of the unum type? That's the one where the I, I believe the the type itself is actually actually variable sized. Yeah. Is that okay. right? So, well, straight away. I mean, it's, that's a that's a whole another um, that's a whole another ball game, really. I mean, having having something that's variable size like that, it is quite. I'd imagine it's quite difficult to to actually work with it when it's in machine registers. It's uh, particularly great for representing numbers, serializing them, and uh, in a in an efficient manner. But for performing arithmetic, I'm not I'm not sure if it's as practical. Um, but certainly, converting to and to and from unum and, and fixed point would uh, would probably be something no, that, I, I, that, so that would be useful to anybody using unum. No. I think, yeah. But that, I, I, that's as far as I've, I've looked at that. Okay. Okay. But this will probably be the last question. Okay. Well, I don't know. You can take your time at the rate we're going. Sure. Oh, no, there we go. Yeah. Um, we do. Yeah, let's, let's make this the, the last there's, one. There's a site that is there. There you are. And just, okay. So just start, start, start back over. Is that all the assignments? Uh, cor correct. Yes. Um, for things where there's a parameter that's the archetype, that's the signed dictates the signage, and uh, also the rep type of fixed point. If uh, the signage there also um, obviously determines the signage, um, and in that way, it's it's a uh, yeah, uh, um, hopefully it's a it's a good way to convey in a familiar way roughly what the capabilities are of the fixed point or or elastic type that you're going to to um, to use is.